Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. My name is Jeff Hatzel. I'm a Senior Application Specialist at Blue Marble Geographics. Today, we're going to look at two newer LiDAR tools in Global Mapper, Automated Pole Classification and Extraction. The Pole Classification tool, which is technically still beta, joins our automated tools for noise, ground, building and tree, and power line classification. We already have a few extraction tools as well for building in trees and power lines. So the pole extraction tool adds to that tool set. Let's take a look at some data I have loaded in Global Mapper. What we're looking at is a ground scan LiDAR point cloud of a region with some poles. I currently have it colorized by elevation value. Now if we're looking at it top down in 2D view, it might be harder to see some poles. I can probably pick a few out here near my cursor and maybe a couple others. But if there's any in busier areas, they're harder to see in 2D view. Uh, this would be a time where I like to take a look in 3D view. And when I do that, I can very clearly see all of the poles in this data set. We have a large light pole here, a variety of flag poles, um, some smaller light posts here, and maybe even a stop sign or something nestled in among the trees. As I start to look at data along the tree line here, it's a little bit harder to see in 2D view. Uh, one thing I like to do uh, in order to see that data a little bit more clearly is use um, the profile to a global mapper. This allows us to focus in on a region and get a little bit better feel for what might be there. So in this little profile view, we can very clearly see where our stop sign is, if I take a look, uh, maybe a little bit farther up here, let's see if we can find uh, a power line, or excuse me, a power pole in our trees. And so here we have a pole nestled in amongst those trees as well. So there's features in there that are just a little bit harder to see um, from the 3D perspective. Uh, we may like to take a look at those in a profile view. Uh, you know, we can measure here, get a feel for the height of the pole and things of that nature. We've recently added some new functionality to uh, the profile tool. So in addition to a variety of new selection tools, um, I can also zoom in and out and pan through my point cloud so I can zoom in and look at things a bit more closely. That functionality exists for regular terrain features as well. So a nice handy way to navigate um, and work in the profile view. Another nice option in profile view allows us to uh, select features a bit more easily. So if I can find a feature of interest that I want to look at, I can select it using one of my many selection tools. In this case, let's just draw a box around this stop sign. Now, once I've selected those features in the profile view, we'll also be able to see them selected under that profile on the map here. If I zoom in, those are my selected points. What's new now in 3D view is that those points will be highlighted and my background unselected points will be grayed out. So a really easy way um, for me to have objects that I've selected stand out very clearly uh, in my 3D viewer. And we can see just how much that selected stop sign uh, is highlighted now. So before we run our poll classification, we always want to make sure that we've classified ground in our point cloud. In this case, I've gone ahead and done that already to save us some time. So we can see, now that I've visualized that point cloud by ground, um, or excuse me, by classification, uh, where the ground is brown and everything else unclassified is gray. So this classification tool contains uh, classifiers for both power lines and power poles. Today, we're just going to look at poles since we don't have any power lines in this data set. Our first couple of settings associated with this classifier allow us to um, essentially smooth objects that we think may be your point clouds. And the reason for this, let's go ahead and take a look in a profile view here, is that points may not fully represent uh, a straight vertical up and down pole. Right, so these points aren't in a perfect straight line. They have some, some spread to them and things like that. 
So those settings allow me to adjust for that and, and essentially smooth the poll feature out. My minimum points for poll and my classification threshold, those just allow us a little bit more wiggle room if um, perhaps we have a low density point cloud, so I don't have a ton of points representing my poll, and maybe the ones that do represent the poll aren't perfect vertically up and down. So keep in mind, while lower values here will allow us to, to grab more polls, we also then eventually will run the risk of maybe unintentionally classifying a tree or other vertical features. Setting the minimum height of my pole is great if I know all of my poles are a certain height above ground. Um, that allows me to make sure I'm not uh, classifying anything that I don't want to of a certain height range. And then my last setting here is just a horizontal threshold. I have that set rather high because um, I want to try to grab some stop signs and some flags on flagpoles here. Once my settings are enabled, I'll go ahead and run the tool. Once that finishes classifying, we'll see now that we have a new color in our point cloud. So all of our poles are outlined, uh, are colored in light blue. We zoom in, we can see them a little bit more clearly, and they're also much more visible now uh, in our 3D view. So I can very clearly see um, where those features have been classified as poles. We'll see that stop sign we were looking at earlier has also been classified as a pole, and that should show up in our uh, profile view as well. So here we can see where that stop sign was classified and maybe some other points in the background were disregarded. One of the last things we might want to do uh, now that these poles are classified is extract uh, points to represent those poles. So I can do that using our extraction tool. And again, we'll just be focusing on the poles, although we could extract other things if they were classified. Uh, by default, this tool extracts a 3D vector point at the bottom of the pole, uh, but we have an option to mark the top of the pole as well, and so that's what we're going to do now. Uh, my settings, uh, again, similar to what we saw earlier, what height pole do I want to classify, and then how many points do I want to represent a pole, and, and how wide of a pole am I looking, um, looking to classify. So we'll go ahead and let that run here for a second. And so what that process did was, based on the parameters we entered, uh, it built and constructed 3D vector points to mark the top of my classified poles. So we can see that all along um, our poles here. They're just stylized by default with uh, a, a point symbol. You could change that to anything you wanted. If we take a look at those in 3D, we'll see now where they sit above the tops of all their poles. So I hope this has been a, a useful uh, introduction and overview for automated poll classification and then the subsequent uh, extraction of poll points. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions.